most believers do not understand the power of time. I have taught and I have read from scripture that the zenith of dominion is dominion over time. Not over things. You can have dominion over things, but you are not truly walking in dominion until you can have dominion over time. The greatest desire of a dying man is not more things. The greatest desire of a dying man is not more influence. For instance, in, Hesek, in, in um, Isaiah chapter 38, the story of Hezekiah. Hezekiah pleaded for more time. That was his prayer. Give me time. Because the moment you have time, every other thing can be restored in time. Are we together? You can see that when God wants to show men mercy, He restores years more than things. I will restore the years. Not just the things. You can lose money and get it back. You can lose your health and go to the hospital. But if you lose time, that is the end of it. In fact, did you know that you call the entire journey from when a man is born to when he dies life time? Life For as long as his spirit can coexist with his body, if it is two days, then his lifetime is two days. If it is hundred years, his lifetime is hundred years. You must understand timing because most believers think all times are convenient for everything. At the end of this teaching, God will plant in you a sense of urgency. There will be a divine sense of urgency in your life. And you will know that whatever wastes your time is of the devil. Because that is the most expensive commodity. Are we together? Second to the salvation that you have gotten in Christ. The gift of time. Time is an equalizer given to everybody. With all the advancement in technology, nobody has been able to add more time as an asset. We have mastered the way of creating robot artificial intelligence to help accelerate us. But God in his wisdom ensured that time remains the equalizer for all men. If it is morning in Nigeria, provided you are in Nigeria, it will not hurry and become afternoon for you. It goes slowly and everybody submits to it. 12 o'clock in Nigeria is 12 o'clock for everybody. 6 o'clock in Nigeria is 6 o'clock for everybody. Within that time zone, everybody helplessly has to wait for that time. Are we together? So time is a blessing. It is an equalizer, unfortunately. Unfortunately, when Satan comes to a man's life, the first thing he does is to study your understanding about time. When he finds out that you do not have an appreciation of the blessing and the divine significance of time, he will occupy you with activities. So that you will think just because you are engaging in several activities, it means that you are walking with time. He says, redeem the time because the days are evil. Praise the name of the Lord. There are people who have wasted time on mundane things, wasted time pursuing things that have no purpose, no eternal value. Are we together? And at the end of their lives, they would look back in regret and say, I wish I had time. I wish I had time. I wish I had time to do this. I wish I had time to do that. When God wants to help men, He grants them wisdom to understand time. Now, please look up. This issue of Kronos and Kairos, let me say a word or two about it. In every man's life, watch this now. Kronos, which is the passage of time, remains with us for as long as we are alive. But Kairos, this opportune time, does not come all the time. I want you to please listen. Let me explain how do I... Okay, let me explain Kronos and Kairos for you. Please look up. Imagine with me a student who is in school, right? Um, 
that student is expected to read and prepare because there would be exams all the time is that true but for a student say in secondary school there's something called junior wayek and there's something called the senior wayek now all exams are important but those two exams can define the next seasons of that person is that true now those periods are called kairos moments so every time the student is expected to be serious every time the student is expected to read and give his or her best but when you see students who are preparing say for jam you see the kinds of skills that they employ because they understand that this is a defining moment if i miss this i may have to wait one year again are we together and so you see people waking up in the night are we together you see all kinds of chain readings people begin to deploy all kinds of creativity to make sure they maximize that moment and a wise person will not say you are working too hard because they know that this is a kairos moment so even when you see them stretching themselves beyond um the the usual way they would read you only encourage them you don't stop them because you know that if they miss out on that opportunity another example imagine with me a student who is writing his final exam say in law school you see that student has done everything and i mean the student is mandated to read and give the best but for that final exam if it means there are people who fast while they are reading pray while they are reading play worship while they are reading soak their legs in water while they are reading any skill by all means everything that becomes an advantage to maximize that moment because there are there are moments that when you miss that is the end of it are we together so we have the gift and the advantage of chronos the passage of time every day but the bible teaches us that in every man's life there are not many of these seasons but they are there and that they, you have to discern the technology of their arrival you need to learn how this how to know that you are in these seasons because the, for a man sometimes in an entire lifetime you may not have more than six of these seasons and for some of us we've already lost two or three so it will take the grace of god to catch up pay attention please hallelujah that in a man's lifetime you will not have these defining moments come all the time for instance a man who wants to become a professional footballer at age 60 you see his zeal is correct his vision is correct but he missed a kairos moment and that there are no biases to that kairos moment there is no club sites that will take him no matter the skill the system that has been built around that field forbids that he will be part of it professionally at that age are we together is someone learning now that means it is not enough to have vision you must understand the timing component to life i must walk the works of him that sends me hallelujah when the disciples saw jesus they discerned a sense of strange urgency and the disciples wondered why jesus seemed to be up and about i mean you are the king of kings having all power you claim you are the son of god coming from heaven what is the rush about to the extent that you will forget to eat after a crusade you would think he should be resting then you see him with a woman at the well and with the same zeal and passion then he says gentlemen i know you are tired let's go to the other side we'll sleep in the boat while we are going he himself was sleeping meaning he was tired we're not the first to start this position though jesus himself <laughs> you see the scriptural button for what we do hallelujah and Jesus got to a point where he let them know that he had to do this because there was urgency connected to it. Paul, the apostle, when Paul encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, 
the level and the extent of urgency that was in Paul, to the extent that if they locked him up in prison, he didn't have time sympathizing with his situation. He said, listen, I don't need your food. Just get me a pen and get me something to be able to write. In prison, all he was concerned, oh, this church, I've not visited them for three months. I'm sure some of these people, uh, wolves in sheep clothing will be in this church now. Let me write something to admonish them. If you came to Paul in prison to say, how are you feeling? That was not what you wanted to hear. How is this church doing? The church in this, the church in that. And then at the end, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course, not our course. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yes. So timing is really, really very important. Very, very important. When you give birth to a child, a young baby, it would be unfair and even wicked of you to now begin to flog the child to say, I'm talking to you and you're not responding back to me. No. You need to give that child time. After five, six years, and you find out, for instance, that the child cannot walk, cannot talk, that now becomes a serious, condi a serious condition. Is that true? Because you have allowed time. There are certain things that should have happened in time. Already I'm praying for someone in the name of Jesus. Whatever has eaten your ears, because I will tell you, do you know what the locusts and the canker worms eat? They don't eat things. They eat years. There are spirits whose assignment is not your money. There are spirits whose assignment is not your influence. There are spirits whose assignment is your years. I will restore the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, let me speak to someone. You are here and you say, Apostle, I even gave my life to Jesus Christ late. Sincerely, I have lived all kinds of things and as it is right now, it seems like time is gone. Thank God you came for this conference. I decree and declare, may the God who is the Lord of time bring restoration to your life. Hallelujah. Please sit down. When you understand the power of time, you will now know why God brought in two spiritual mysteries, Pastor Nat, to be able to help men to maximize destiny. Number one is speed. Number two is restoration. These mysteries directly deal with time. When God grants a man speed, why do you pray for speed? Why do you ask for speed? Hallelujah. If I left Abuja by road to come here, you cannot say I'm stagnated because the car would still be moving. But the problem is with respect to the time allotted, I may not arrive to meet the activity. Are we together now? So if I can outsource another agency that can help me, remember my movement is with respect to time. So someone, for instance, and respectfully so, who left in the morning, most likely has not arrived by now. Are we together now? And then another person, both of us are enjoying movement. When you say, who are those making progress? All of us will stand. But who are those who are experiencing speed? You see, Speed is the ability to do much within time. I'm saying all of this because when I connect it to our destiny and I connect it to these Kairos seasons, because I will be showing you prophetically that as individuals, as the body of Christ, as a continent, we are in our Kairos moment. How do you know you are in your Kairos moment? The answer is in Genesis 1.14. He said he made light to signify time. That means there is a revelation. There is always a body of spiritual truth that helps you to know what season you are in. He made light and he put those lights to signify seasons. You can use light, revelation, to know what season you have stepped into. There are many, many people. Listen. When a farmer, right now, this is November, December in Nigeria, and we call it dry season, it would be unwise for a farmer to go to the farm right now. Is that true? 
and then start farming and not look for an alternative source of water. Why? Because you do not have an advantage of rain. Well, maybe in Lagos here, yeah, I don't know how it works. Are we together now? But generally speaking, in Nigeria, we have what we call the dry and the rainy season. A farmer does not need to worry about rain when it's the rainy season. He just farms and he allows the advantage that comes with the season. Are we together now? There's what we call irrigation. Irrigation means you try to simulate rainy season in dry season. Because you want the crops to grow. But that the season does not give you that advantage. You have to outsource through technology another route. So many people have missed certain seasons. I'll give you an instance. There are people who God deliberately brought close to others within a particular season and they did not discern why they were there. The man will keep asking them, can I help you? And say, no, no worry. Little did they know the man had only two years and he will relocate somewhere. And he, there were Kairos moments. Maybe God granted you access to someone in government. It was by God's, God's grace and the man was benevolent. God gave you unusual access to his ears, his heart, and his hands. But because you could not discern seasons. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jacob said, the Lord was in this place, but I knew not. Do you know, because Jacob did not discern the season in Genesis 28, you know his punishment for that 20 years. Jacob paid the price 20 years, two wives, and six extra years after 20 years jacob said i need to leave and in chapter 32 when god was coming to him again he said this time around he held him and said i will not let you go i am already this this long behind schedule unless you bless me i will not let you go if my time with you will be this night I will utilize the time and gain back 20 years. I'm going to be showing you how to redeem time. Because there is a technology that has been given to the believers. That when we engage it, we are able to redeem and cover time. Hallelujah. It is on the strength of these systems of advantage that the Bible says, For we know that all things, all things can work together. So don't say, I gave my life to Christ at 40. I mean, the time I'm already halfway gone. Don't worry. There is something you can do with God. He designed a system in His economy where your one year can be what your 10 years would have been. Do you believe this? In the name of Jesus Christ. How do you prepare for this? defining moments, these opportune seasons. You prepare for Kairos by maximizing Kronos. That means every day the passage of time is the raw material you use in preparing for these defining moments. You do not waste every day and waste every time and expect to just stumble into opportune times. Let me give you an instance. Let's assume, for instance, that a young music minister is trusting God for visibility, that God would announce the person. It is not the day the opportunity comes that he prepares. Are we together? The opportunity, the time he's looking for is Kairos. But the, his performance during the Kairos moment will depend on what happens in Kronos. David prepared for the palace, not in the palace. David took advantage of his chronos. Are we together now? He learned how to sling. He killed the lion. He killed the bear. It is interesting that nobody was there to record and capture it. However, the justice system of God preserved that. That he was still using his chronos properly. One time, I like how God announces men. The Bible says that the father told him, listen, go and feed your brothers. And he only took food and heard a beast roaring. And he said, what is the meaning of this? They said, this man, Goliath of God, six, fingers, six toes, young man, go back home. Immediately, he said, what shall be done? What shall be done to the man who takes this guy down? And they said all kinds of things. And he said, listen, I'm able to do this. Said, listen, don't bring shame on our family. 
we are warriors and he said listen don't disrespect me for wanting to take advantage of my kairos let me defend my preparation i was in the wilderness i was in the wilderness when the lion came when the bear came i toyed and saul looked at him and said no there's something this man this is not he has prepared for the kairos moment and when he stood before goliath goliath said am i a dog israel this is what you are bringing and david said listen you come to me with your stairs and with your bows but i come to you in a name i maximize my moments of preparation i will bring you down and use your own sword take off your head and give it to the birds and with one sling that is mastery he didn't he didn't throw the bible does not give us information that he kept doing trial and error he had done that in the wilderness god is speaking to someone already listen waiting for the day god will announce you is the recipe for remaining a mediocre forever you prepare in prayer god has told you he's sending you to the nations the secret is not to start looking for opportunities sing my song invite me no that's not how it works where nobody sees you is your greatest stage the real stage is not where people see you is where you are alone and you are praying you are fasting you are preparing that is chronos being maximized are we together according to the law of times and seasons i guarantee you remember the bible says for everything there is a season that means your season is there john remained in the wilderness he was not wasting his time he was eating locusts and wild honey preparing himself finding out the sign to identify jesus the bible says until his season of appearing when that season came with precision when he saw jesus he said behold the lamb i have prepared seeing you i know you are the one there are many of us we do not even know how the doors we are to enter look like because we have been wasting the seasons of preparation either in jealousy or competition and all of that rather than preparing for glorious moments isn't it amazing ladies and gentlemen that the captain of our salvation jesus himself he used 30 years to prepare for a ministry of three and a half years if you looked at jesus you would call you would think that jesus had delay in purpose how do you prepare for 30 years what is so special about your assignment 30 years and then after 30 years from age 12 in fact to age 30 theologically speaking there is still a debate as to what jesus was doing because they were the silent days of jesus 18 years we do not hear about jesus again what was he doing where did he go the last thing we know about him is that he was in the temple listening to the doctors and asking intelligent questions at age 30 we see this young man coming to be baptized of john and john saw him and said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world he said i'm not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe and he said suffer it to be so that scripture will be fulfilled he baptized john and the heavens were open he was full of the spirit and he began his ministry within a short time the bible says his fame spread abroad because the level of power and grace and wisdom when he gathered the people and spoke they said we've not had this not in this fashion who is this man where did he come from they gave him according to the synoptic account of luke in luke chapter 4 they gave him the scroll of Isaiah and he began to read the spirit of the Lord is upon me he hath anointed me he read all of these things they were not impartations he used his corners for someone already the spirit of God is speaking see if you do not perform well and you abort these defining moments it is because you wasted every day that means every day is counting for that day every day counting towards that day every day man of god your every day the time with god the time with prayer the two two hours the one one hour of worship counting building up for that moment of your season of appearing ask anybody today that god has helped and god has lifted they will tell you they can trace to moments 
moments moments of pain moments of labor without reward are we together now moments they knew for most people listen listen for most people they saw long ago where god was taking them to do you know sincerely some of these days that god has brought us today we saw them long ago but we knew we we're not just going to jump into these days so just wishing and saying i have a dream <clears throat> when you have a dream you wake up and then you begin to walk with the holy spirit line upon line precepts upon precept for some of us your service in this house is your maximizing chronos because a day will come god will send you like an arrow to some nation in the world and you may be pioneering a mighty revival but let me tell you if you are a revivalist your first commission will not be revival you already know you are in error when the, your first assignment becomes what you will be doing for the rest of your life that's not how god works with people if you are paul he will start with you in a certain way are we together now that means if you think god has called you to be an apostle and you get up and your very first assignment in life is apostolic ministry you are in error that's not how god leaves people god can call you to be a worshiper and your first assignment is to sweep the church how does sweeping the church have to, what does it have to do with worship ask Stephen what attending tending to the welfare department had to do with him rising to be a very mighty man god will give you instructions he's using he's preparing you there are some of you because of the nature of the assignment god has given you he will not allow you to stay with your parents he will put you with a strict parent somewhere and for 10 years you will not talk what god how what is all this i have parents this man is too harsh mm -mm. chronos god is preparing you for that time because the kind of body you will be carrying huh? you are going to be leading a stiff necked people so it's important for you to be used to pain and controversy to build stamina and stature so god will leave you listen i'm speaking to you prophetically 